So, so we started looking at the first exam uh, exercise on the hypothesis testing. So we're going to continue with that and go to question number eight. Uh, it's also a hypothesis testing question. And if we look at the question, it says to test the hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that the mean is equal to 100, and this against the alternative, which states that the, the mean is greater than 100. So since because this is greater than, it means we're doing a one-tailed test. And this also tells us, it also tells us that, also tells us that we only have one region of rejection which will be on the right sorry my my graph looks so weird it tells us we have one region of rejection which is on the on the right because of that greater than so if anything falls in this side, we're going to reject our null hypothesis. Therefore, it tells us that we're going to have only one critical value. And based on the based on the question that or the statements that we are given, we need to also check because we know that we're doing hypothesis for the mean. Are we given the population standard deviation or are we given the sample standard deviation? So if we continue to read our question, our sampled mean, which is our n, our n is 100, and the observation found that the sampled mean x bar is 106, and our standard deviation, and they put the s, therefore our population standard deviation is unknown, therefore it means also our critical value, it, we will use a T alpha because it's only one-sided test, so it will be alpha and the degrees of freedom. So the question says, assume, assume a significant level of, of 1%, calculate the test statistic. So also with this one, they are not asking us to find the critical value or anything else. They are asking us to calculate the test statistic. So we're going to use the T statistic, which says the mean minus the population mean divided by your standard deviation divided by the square root of n, because this is by the standard error. And since we are given the sample standard deviation, and then we just substitute the values into the formula. Our mean is 106 minus our population mean is 100. It's always stated in your hypothesis testing. Divide by our standard deviation, which is 35, divide by the square root of n. So our n is 100 divided by 106. And this step by step. One oh six minus hundred equals six divided by thirty five divided by the square root of hundred equals three point five. And this is equal six divided by three point five equals one point seven one four. And the answer is in three. This is in four decimal places. So this will be three four three because the answer is two eight five seven one four. Oh, I forgot. I was not supposed to do it. For you, you were supposed to do it. Anyway, the next exercise, you will do it yourselves. Uh, 
And when you look at the answer, and the answer will be option number E. You must be very careful when you answer this question because if you look at them, they look almost exactly the same. They look almost exactly the same. It's just that for the others, they have swapped around the values of the ones and And that's how you will answer that question because it's asked for the test statistic. And this is our test set. Okay. And that was question number eight. And if you look at it, there were only two questions for hypothesis testing. Now we move on into question number nine. With question number nine, if you look at it, they gave you the table and all that. And this, we can assume this is the chi square test uh, question. The trustee of a company pension plan has solicited the opinions of the sample of company employees about the proposed revision of the plan. A breakdown of the responses is shown in the table below. We want to test if there is enough evidence to infer that the response differ among the three groups of employees. And this is their responses on a contingency table. Which option provide the expected observation in order to calculate the chi-square value? So all they want you to do is to calculate the expected value of this table. How do we calculate the expected values? We calculate the expected value by saying the row total multiplied by the column total divide by n, which is the grand total. So what you have to do is to calculate the total of this table and calculate the total of the table. So I can rewrite that formula again at the bottom. I'm going to write it here. So the expected Value or observation is given by the row total multiplied by the column total divided by n or the grand total. So what you do is quickly calculate the total of this table. So here you create total, and there you create total. And we're going to use the totals to calculate the expected. And this is where your N will be. So calculate the total of the table. I'm going to give you time and then we're going to work out the total. So what is the total of blue collar, which will be 67 plus 73? It's 100. And Oh, 6732 plus 11. 110. 110. 110. 110. Which one? 67 plus 3. Yeah, the, the, the top one. The top row. 67 plus 32 plus 11. Oh, so this is 110. Okay. Yes. And the against. Uh, 18 plus 9? 90. 110 plus 90? Uh, it's 200. 200. So we also yeah. need to do for the columns. 
the first plus 63. Mm -hmm. 130. 32 plus 18. Uh, 50. 11 plus 9. Uh, 20. Now you have the totals. So you just need to calculate the expected value for 67, which will be the row total, which is 110 times the column total, which is 130. I'm gonna give you five minutes to, comp to do the calculation and then I will write them there and then we'll look at the options which one is the right one. We'll make this table bigger. Once we have calculated them, we can go and look at which one is the correct one. So you said for each one. So let's uh, say we want to calculate for 67. Mm -hmm. So the expected value for 67, you will say it is 110 multiplied by 130 okay. divided by 200. And this gives you how much? So 110 times 130 is 14,300. Mm -hmm. Divide by 200 is 71.5. So then you can write there 71.5 and then it's due for 32. Then you do the same for 32. Uh, 35. Then two will be 110 times 15. Uh, that's 5,500 mm -hmm. divided, by, divided by 200. Yes. Which is 27.5. And that will be 27.5 and then do for 11. Uh, it's 110 times 20, mm -hmm. which is 2200 mm -hmm. uh, divided by 200, which is mm -hmm. 11. Is that, yeah, 110. Yes, 11. Mm -hmm. Then due for 63. That's 90 times mm -hmm. 130, mm -hmm. which is, which is uh, 11,700. Yes. Divided by 200. Yes. Uh, 58.5. 58. 58.5. Yes. Then you do the for 18. It's 90. Yes. Times 50. Yes. Uh, which is 4,500. Mm -hmm. Divided by 200, which is 22.5. 22.5. Yes. And the last one for nine. 90 times 20. Uh, divided by 200, which is nine. Now we have our expected values, 71.5, 27.5, and 11.5. So now we just need to go and look at which table is the correct one. Uh, what happened to the table now? Oh, there we go, come back. So if we look at this, we need 71 and 85 at the bottom, so this is not correct. 
reduce it again. Um, if we look at option B, which says 71.5, 27.5, 11, 58.5, 22.5, it relates exactly the same as what we have on the table. This will be correct. But for interest sake, if we look at the other values, we can see that this one was rounded off. This one was rounded off not correctly because it should say 28 if they are rounding it off. And this will have been 59 if they are rounding it off. But because we know that we're not rounding off, then that is not correct. And if we look at the next one as well, you can see that it's also incorrect. And the last one as well is incorrect. So the only one that is correct is only B. How do we know that we are or aren't rounding it off? You do not round off. So you will always get a decimal of four. 0.5. Okay. You always keep the decimals. And Don't round it off. Yes. All right. Okay. So that is how we answer chi square questions. Going to the next question. Uh, on this question, it says, consider this output that we have. It's an Excel output where they have the observation values for row one and columns, row one, row two, column one, two, and three, which has the observed values for two variables. They calculated the total for that, and they also did calculate the chi-square test or the test statistic of chi-square, which is 0 0.331. They also calculated the degrees of freedom. And remember how we find the degrees of freedom? The number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. Not the row total, but the number of rows. So here we have two rows, we have three columns. So you just calculate it by using that. They also calculated the p-value because that in an Excel, it will be able to calculate the p-value of this chi-square test. And they also gave an, as the critical value that we can use for this table. So based on this information that we are given, we need to see if the question is telling us the, the truth. Another thing you need to know about the chi-square test, it means if the chi-square statistic, which is the test statistic, which is that, if it's greater than our critical value, or chi-square critical, sorry, my bad, I did it correctly. If it is greater than chi-square critical, which is this value, we reject the null hypothesis. That is the decision that we need to make. The other thing you need to always remember is for the p-value, remember? P-value rejection, so this is for the decision. And also another decision that you can make, if the p-value is less than alpha value, we reject the null hypothesis, so remember that. So in this instance, they didn't tell us what our alpha is at the moment, but they might tell us on the statement. We need to take that into consideration. And remember, those are your observed values. The values that you see here will be your observed values, your expected values. You will calculate them by using the formula we used previously. Now let's look at the statement, each one of them. We can start at the bottom because I just want, it's the easiest way to, to find the, the answer because then we will find the answer quickly without um, looking at the complex one. So we go to the this ones at the bottom, which makes it easy to eliminate if they are correct or not correct. So number one, num number E, it says the observed frequency for row one and column three is 179. It means go to this table, look for row one 
and column three and see if the observed frequency is the same as that what they are saying. Is that correct? No. It's that one. Not correct. And this is not correct. Oh, based on the information, we're looking for the incorrect one. So automatically you will see that is the incorrect one and you will stop there. But uh, that is not the purpose of why I wanted us to start at the bottom because it's easy to find the observed frequencies and the degrees of freedom. The others, you need to think long and hard. But let's go to the next one. The observed frequency for row one and column three is 174. Row one, column one, column three, that is correct. The degrees of freedom, how do we find it? We find it by using row minus one and column minus one. How many number of rows do we have? We have one, two rows. So that will be two minus one. And the number of columns, we have one, two, three. We will have three minus one. So this is one, two minus one is one, and three minus one is two. And then the answer will be equals to two. And therefore this will be correct. On B, remember, we can use the decision of the P value at the alpha. Our p-value we are given in there and they also give us the value of alpha, which is 0, 0,05. So if p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And remember with the null hypothesis, your null hypothesis would have stated that they are independent. Remember that? They will state that it's independent and uh, your alternative will state that they are depend dependent. So based on this information, we can see that um, our, since the p-value is, p-value is greater than our null hypothesis, therefore we do not reject the two variables are dependent. So we do not reject the null hypothesis. Actually, this was made wrong as well. Um, I think the sign should have been, uh, it should have been independent because we're not rejecting the null hypothesis because the two variables are independent. So from this exam paper, they didn't do this question right. I didn't notice that as well when I was working through it, or oh, unless if it's me, I, I wrote this question wrong. But this should be independent for it to be correct because we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. Therefore, the two statements are independent. Since 0. Before we even move on, I can just validate or check that question because I have the question paper for it. We can quickly check if it was my typing error or it was the typing of the question paper itself. Tutorials. It's going to be quick, quick. Just now I'll check it for you. Let's see if. Question number might be that I am the one who typed the question wrong. Nope, it's like that on the exam paper that I used. Uh, so it says since p value of 0, 0,08 is greater than greater than 0 0.05, the two variables are dependent. So it was a mistake that they did from the question paper, but you know that some of these exam papers they have errors. K 
Okay, so this should have been an independent one to make it incorrect. Since the value of our critical value is less than the critical uh, the critical value of 5.9, the null hypothesis is independent, so we cannot reject. So since this we are not rejecting, we should also not reject this. The statement should also stay the same as independence. So as you can see with this one, which is true because if it was greater than, the test statistic of 0, 0,01 is less than our critical value, which is 5,996. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis and we can state that this is independent as far as this one also should have said it is independent. The only incorrect answer would have been option number E. Any questions? Um, and, and when we, when sorry, before you, you ask the question, when you go to the exam, you might not also know these things because you will never know what your lecture has put in as a correct answer or option, which is incorrect, like we saw with the assignment as well, where um, a correct answer was marked as incorrect, whereas it should have been a correct one. So it depends on what the lecture has submitted as an answer in the options when they submit to the examination department. Okay, any question? So, so what I wanted to ask is, so with the first option, with option A, uh, the, the chi-squared stat, would that be seen as the, is it almost like the p-value or? No, this is what? our chi-squared stat, which is, your sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. You remember that? Yes. That is your chi-square state. That is this value that they calculated. So, so is that how we how is so basically what I'm trying to get to is on what basis do we reject it? Is that because that's a value effectively that's calculated? How do by we reject it? Yeah, by using the decision with the critical value. Remember, you will go and find yeah. the critical value. Let's do it this way. All this. So our chi-square test, we're going to calculate it using, you calculate it using the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. Remember that. Yes. Then you go and find the critical value, which is the chi-square critical value, which is chi-square alpha and the degrees of freedom. Sorry. Alpha and the degrees of freedom. Let's say our alpha in this instance was 0, 0.05 like they have there. So then you go to chi-square stat and you go find alpha 0, 0.05 and the degrees of freedom is 2. And this you find that it is 5,992. And this, you calculated it using that formula. Based on this, calculated the expected value and solve it, and you find that it's 0, 0,331. Mm -hmm. No, based on the chi-square test, if you, go to, if you don't know how the chi-square test looks like, you can go to the table and go look for the chi-square test. So if I go critical values of chi, there is a table. This is the table that has the critical values of chi. So you can see that the rejection area is always going to be on one side. So you go here, you look for two, and you look for 0, 0,05, which is that value. 0, 0,05 has that value. That is your critical value. So then we assume that we got that value. Come here, we make a decision. We know that this area, which is our area of rejection, the region of rejection, our chi-square test, it's 5,992. 
992 based on this information that they give us on the table, we saw that it's 9951, 991. You take this value, you look where does it fall, it falls on the side. Therefore, it falls in there. You not reject the null hypothesis. And we know that if the null hypothesis is independent, so we can state that we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Happy, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that was chi-square test. So with chi-square test, they gave us two questions in that exam paper. And the exam paper that I'm working with, actually, I got it from the SDA 1510. I used the, S the one outside of your module. And if you look at there, this is the value that I used. So if you look at it, it was the May, June 2013 exam paper. So we move into 24 of that exam paper. So it's 1510 and 1610, your content are almost exactly the same. The exam paper that you are writing is different. But also this year they might ask you the 1510 last year exam paper and the 1510 they might get the 1610 last year exam paper. It, it, they can interchange that because it's different lectures. And yeah, in different kinds of, but the, the data come, like some of the questions might be repeated in both of the exam papers. Um, so yeah, you can get questions that were asked in the 1510 in your 1610 as well. Okay, so this question paper, question number 11, which will have been question 24 in that exam paper, shows that the study was carried to determine, let me put it bigger, to determine the adverse effect of the fertilizer on the maize yield. Uh, uh, much fertilizer, which is our X value, which is our independent variable, and on the maize field, which is our Y independent, our Y dependent variable, uh, a random sample of six farms were chosen in Gauteng, and their maize yielded uh, yield were recorded after the field has been over fertilized, and these are the results. Now, since they are giving you a table like this, so you can use your state mode to capture the data. Remember that. So all, all um, calculators have different ways of capturing the information. So make sure that you go to your state mode and capture the information. We'll go out on this one. and go to share my screen, my entire screen, not just the, not just the PDF. So I don't know what kind of calculators you have. If I can give an, get an indication of what kind of a calculators you have then we can work through this because at the end we need to be calculating the y-intercept, the y-intercept, the regression line, and the correlation of coefficient. So it means we need to know how to capture the data from your state mode. Are you using Casio calculators or, scientific, or state, uh, sharp scientific calculators? Uh, Casio. Using, using Casio. Casio. Okay, I'll use my FX Casio, so I don't know the kind of one that you have. So I'll open my Casio one. Which might look exactly the same as your ones, and this is the Casio that we have been using all along. <coughs> okay. So that is our data. 
So now we need to put our calculator to stat mode. We press the mode and then you select where it says stat on your calculator. My one is on three and you select the ABC. And remember the ABC, we need to write it down so that we can always remember y is equals to a plus bx so that we can remember that our y is equals to our b0 plus our b1x where this is our intercept and this is our lobe so everywhere where we're going to answer the question in the exam they ask us what is the intercept we know which value we're going to be pressing our a for intercept and our b for slope so now we select two for the line or a plus b x so we press two and then we want to capture the data by first putting in the x values so we say two equal uh, it's not two equal so i must go up it's four four equal, two equal, eight equal. And remember to put all the values in order so that when you put the other values as well, they are aligned. 16 equal. So I've captured all six values. Go to the top by moving to the left with my arrow and going up, 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 up. Until I get to line number one. And then I can put 22 equal, 20 equal, 19 equal, 17 equal, 16 equal, 13 equal. And now I've captured all the values. The first question, since we can use that for process of eliminating the questions, once we are done, we can press the AC button. <clears throat> and now we can put, we can, we want to calculate the correlation. So we remember to press the state button by first pressing the shift and then press button number one for state. And we're going to press five for reg, five for reg. And we have our A, B and and R and X hat and Y hat. We are looking for R because coefficient of correlation is R. So R corresponds to three. So we just press three. And then we press three and we press equal and that is our coefficient of correlation going back to our question we're looking for the incorrect one so we know that this is correct and then we look at b b says a strong negative relationship exists between the amount the yield and the amount of fertilizers do you agree is there a strong negative relationship? Yes. Yes, there is a strong negative relationship. B is asking you to find the correlation. Uh, sorry, B, C is asking you to find the y-intercept. Remember our y-intercept? In this instance, it will be A. And it also asks you to find B, which is our slope. So going back, you go shift, and then you go stat, you go five for reg, and there are your A and a B. We start with A first, which is on one, and then you press equal, and that gives you 22.8746, which means this is correct. And then we want to calculate B. So you do the same. Oh, sorry, my bad.
I think I've closed. Did I close it? Okay, they didn't close. It's still here. Okay, so we want to get to the B. So we go shift. We press one. We press five for rec. And we're going to select two for B, which is our slope. And we press equal sign. And that gives us 0 0.571 uh, because the number to the right is 5, so we can add 1, and that is 1, 3, and that is correct. So now it means C is also correct. Question number D, it says the slope for this problem above applies that for every one unit increase in X score, there will be a decrease in the value of your Y. Is that true or is that false? I'd say true. Because so as you say, it is a negative slope. And since it's a negative slope, it says for every value when X increases, there will be a decrease in the value of our Y. And that is correct. And remember, we're looking for the incorrect one. So now the last one, it says our regression line is given by Y is equals to B 1X minus B0. The way they wrote it, I'm going to rewrite the formula. Since there is an X next to the value, so therefore it means this is our B1, or which is our B X. Like we know that our formula B goes with an X. And this says plus A. So if we go back to our values that we calculated. What is our A? Our A should be 2.79. So since this is not A, that is not correct. And since this is not B, that is not correct. Therefore, the incorrect option is equals to that. So you will need to be very careful on when you answer the questions like this in the exam as well. because they can just trick you by this, by swapping the values around. And if you're not paying attention, you might select another value to say, oh, but I don't know which one is incorrect. Maybe let me just biggie, biggie, mabelani, and then choose the incorrect one, which was not, or which is not the, the truth. How, so how many simple, this one is simple linear regression. Oh questions. yes, this is linear regression. Didn't I mention that in the beginning? Oh, sorry. So this is linear. Yeah. Okay. Linear regression. And this is the second last question. So we can go to the last question. And your last question, which is question number 12, is also linear regression. As you can see, they also follow the same the same format, like from your structure of your module. Okay, so with this question, if I can make it bigger so that you can see the question clearly. The estimation of the relationship 
for this annual bonus Y in thousands and the years of experience is given by this equation. The coefficient of determination is 0 0.49. If you notice on this question as well, before I can move on, it looks almost exactly the same as the other questions that we have been doing uh, with the self-assessment question. So you might find that this question we dealt with in one of the questions, in one of the, the, the session that we dealt with when we were doing the, uh, the self-assessment, because uh, like I said, most of the questions comes from the past exam papers, and it can be from the 1510 module or from the 1610 module. So the coefficient of determination is 0 0.49, which this is our R squared. The objective is to estimate the annual bonus of a person with five years of experience. So if this is the objective, for five years of experience, so it means where we see X, we can put five there. And with that, we can substitute into the formula and calculate what the value of our Y will be. And do that calculated, and once you have calculated it, <laughs> once we have calculated it, then we can look at how we answer all the questions based from question number A to B. So this should be 0 0.9333 plus 2.1143 times 5. Sorry, because I made the screen very small. I can't see why I'm writing. And just calculate this value so that we can find out what the y hat is. Are we done? Have you calculated it? Do you have the answer? Don't try and answer the question. I just want you to calculate and then we'll go through the question ourselves. I will explain some of the things on how to interpret it afterwards before we answer any of the question. Did you calculate it? Yes. Okay, how much? So uh, five times two point double one four three is ten point five yes. seven one five. Mm -hmm. And then plus point nine three three three, that's mm -hmm. eleven point five zero four eight. Okay, so now you need to also take into consideration that they say the bonus is in thousands. So it means we need to multiply this value by a thousand when we get to the answer. So what you do, you multiply that value with a thousand and what do you get? 11,504, 11,000. 
504.80. Okay, so, <clears throat> and that is your predicted value. That's how you will predict the new value of your bonus based on five years of experience. That's one. Number two, you need to be able to know how to interpret the question as well, because they are not only about the five year experience, but they want you to also know how to interpret the equation of a straight line. Remember, the y intercept, we, we interpret it by saying, if x is equal to zero, so if there will be no years of experience, the minimum expected balance would have been 0 0.9333. That is, if there, are, there is no years of experience, a person will earn 933 rent in bonus. Number two, you need to be able to explain your slope. The slope says for every one unit increase in the values of your years of experience, there will be an increase in your bonus of two point, an additional, not, not that, an additional 2.143, uh, which will be 2,143 additional increase because that is the slope. So it means your bonus will increase by, depending on how many number of experience you will have for every additional unit that you increase your number of years of experience, there will be an increase on your bonus of 2,143 rent. That's slope. The other thing they gave you was the coefficient of determination, where they said it is 0 0.49 which means there is a 49% total variation in the values of y that is explained by the values of x. And we are able to also calculate the coefficient of correlation, coefficient of correlation from that by taking the square root of r squared, which means the square root of 0 0.49. So you need to calculate that and say how much it is. And this will be 0 0.70. And taking into consideration what is in front in terms of the slope, it means the slope is positive, so our regression will also be positive. So based on this information that I just provided you and spoke about, we need to start answering the questions. We are looking for the incorrect statement. So if you were listening to me, you will know which statement is incorrect. So we'll start with A. Is A correct? Yes, we've got a constant of 933. Yes, we have a constant of 933. And is C correct? If we Which one? The value, yes. Uh, Sam is trying to show his answer. I think he said last time that he can't speak, so he's trying to show us his answer by video. Okay. Oh, huh. okay. Uh, let's bring let's bring this also into the mix. Sorry, I'll close the calculator and bring the camera in 
so that we can see them as part of the discussion. Sorry, I need to minimize. Oh, come on, I need to minimize it. Let me minimize this one first. Come on, work with me. Okay, you will be part of the discussion, Sam, don't worry. We are including, because we're doing the last question anyway. Okay, so we are able to see you there. So B is correct, yes. Okay. And is C correct? And Sam is also saying, yes, it's correct. Yes, uh, because for every five year experience, the, we calculated that. We said there will be an increase in the bonus of 1, 000, uh, 11,000 rand. Number D, it says there is a positive correlation coefficient between the annual bonus and experience. Is this positive? Uh, since we calculated it, we can also look at the sign in front of the slope. Is it positive or negative? Yes, I am. It is positive. Correct. Which makes the last question the incorrect one which is the option that we are looking for, because if that was positive, the last one it says, the coefficient of correlation will be negative 0, 0,70, and we calculated it, it's positive 0, 0,70. And we're done with one exam paper. Um, any question? Because this was the last exam paper, or the last question from this exam paper. Do you have any questions? I will post the, um, the timed assessment uh, that you can take at any time, any place. And then when you are ready to have a discussion on that, we can schedule a, a, a session online and we have that discussion. But I want to make sure that everybody has taken that assessment so that we can work through the areas where you, uh, you found them more difficult. So I'll post it hopefully by tomorrow or earliest Monday morning. You should have it available. Um, that will be a timed one. So you can go through it, but you will also be able to submit it as multiple times as possible. So you can go through that the first time, the second time, the third time, but it will be timed as if like you are writing an exam. So it means you will have to make sure that the first time around, uh, you give yourself two hours a day to complete it. Uh, or maybe I should not do it timed. I should ma not make this one. I'm not sure because we have limited number of days as well because you're writing on the 16 and you are still busy with other things. So we only have three weeks. I need to make sure that I accommodate all these things into or take all these things into consideration when I do that, whether I should make it timed or not. I will see. Maybe I will not make it timed, but the one a week before you go write the exam, I will make that one timed in two hours time. So, but for this other one that I will post, it will have all the questions, like it will be a, a past exam paper, from question one up until question 25, as if you're writing the exam. And you can submit it as multiple times as you can. Um, I will also provide feedback for every submission that you do. And if you haven't noticed with this one, some of the question I also, in the feedback, I do give detail. Maybe I should go to the, um i downloaded it somewhere i should find it on my downloads oh sorry i mean the document maybe i should go to download i have it downloaded 
Okay, since I can't I can see it now, let me go to, I'm just going to show you. <clears throat> On this must exit. So some of the answers, I think I will do them the same way as should be able to provide. Let me see. I will send you the document, this document as well. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the numbers. Uh, I will email it when I send the weekly communication this week. Um, you will notice this is just um, for all the feedback. So I didn't do question by question um, feedback. All I did was the feedback at the end. So explaining why you selected that is incorrect and how you can answer it correctly. And also it has all the details. So I've tried to go down deep into much detail when I provide feedback on the incorrect one. And this is what I will do for all the assessment that I will post. And if you go at the end somewhere, you can see there, I'm also trying to show you how to do some of the calculations as well. I can see that this question was repeating. That is the one that we did, which was repeating. And on this one as well, there I'm showing you how to calculate this. I'm giving you feedback on how to calculate that. and how you can find which one is the correct one and not the correct one. <clears throat> um, and then also, yeah, you will see there is a um, feedback. And for the correlation, I'm not sure if I'm doing any feedback other than just providing the statement to say why is it incorrect. Maybe I will send this. And what else can I send to you? Oh, I must also do the same with the, the previous one that we did uh, for study unit one to study unit 12 so that you can have all the answers as well. <clears throat> and then, yeah, and then I will post the other online assessment for you to do at your own time. And when one, when you are ready, we can have a discussion about that. We can schedule an, again another online session, but as of for this week and next week, I'm canceling all the online discussion so that everybody can work on their own and catch up and then so that we have fruitful discussions where you can also give input or, and, and also discuss how some things are difficult or not, because at the moment you don't know whether what we have done was it difficult when you were doing it alone because you never tried it on your own. Um, yeah, so I'll just give you some time. And I will see you after two weeks. One, one question before we go, ma'am. The, the chi-squared question, is, mm -hmm. is that part of the hypothesis question? Is it included as part of the hypothesis? Yes, it's also part of the hypothesis. Remember, it has also the seven steps or six steps that you can do, stating the null hypothesis uh, and the alternative hypothesis, stating what you are given, calculating the critical value, calculating the test statistic, uh, making the decision, and continue. So it's still a hypothesis test. And depending on the type of questions they will ask, so I will find, I will try and see if I will look at the types of exam papers that we I have and try and mix them to see if they're asking um, different format of questions. For example, uh, maybe if I can go to one of the past exam paper. 
uh, under the downloads, I can go to SPA. You can just open this one. Some of the questions we use them in, in the activities during our online sessions as well. So they should give you some guide guidance in terms of the type of questions that you will get in the exam. So if I go to the bottom one, so for example, like this one is a chi-square test question. Yeah, they're asking you to find the critical value. And they give you the level of significance. So you go to the table using the degrees of freedom and this alpha value. Go to the table, like you will go here and say alpha is 0 0.10. What will be the degrees of freedom? It was one. And you find that uh, answer. That is the critical value question that they're asking. Then the other questions, they might look like this. As you can see here, they have all seven steps, all six steps. What is, what is your alternative? What is your degrees of freedom? What is your critical value? How you make a decision? So different questions in the exam. You just need to know your content as well. And maybe also if I look at the regression questions, but with the regression questions, like we've done most of the exercises from the regression question. So if I look at this, they only have one question on the regression question, which is this. It asks if X is independent, Y is dependent, what is your slope, um, and based on this information. So your slope will be the one next to the X. Um, and then it says, uh, is there a relationship between X and Y? This is regression. Regression is a test for to see whether this, there is a relationship between the two variables. And it says, if X is equals to zero, Y will be that. So if X is equals to zero, Y will be that. So, and they're looking for the incorrect statement. So the questions are easy. You just need to apply your mind, as you can see. But they ask them in different formats, okay? Yeah, the simple, the simple linear ones, these ones are, are easier. And, and if I look at the, yeah, if I look at that same uh, October, November 2018 question paper, as you can see, is exactly the same as 2019 exam paper. You see that the football, football, but they are different. If I look at this, it says the degrees of freedom is three. The critical value is 7.18. If I look at this, it's oh, actually it's exactly the same. But here they're looking for the incorrect one, and here they're looking for the correct one. So, yeah, so as, yeah. But they are exactly almost the same. So if I go to the second one, remember this. Uh, on this one, they were asked to find at 10%. So if I go down at 10%, and in 2018, they were asked at 1%. But the same type of um, exercise, including also with the last question on your regression line which here yeah, they're asking you which one is the incorrect one. And in 2019, they were asked what is the incorrect one as well. So, but different regression line. Oh, come on. Is it different? It's the same. So they just changed one of the variable, one of the values. So um, you just need to make sure that you go through the exercises or the activities in order to prepare because the questions are almost exactly the same. It's just that they, they ask them in different ways. Uh, maybe next time they might use the same question, but instead of saying A and B, they might say male and female. And on number one and two, they might put the Mary and John, something like that. Or chicken licking and KFC, something like that. But the concepts are still 
the same. All right, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. We'll see thank you. Next time. Yes. Um, yes, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye, Sam. Bye, Sam.